What's up watchers and welcome back to episode 5 of the RuneScape 3 Iron Man series. So I'm going to start this episode off by doing a quick farm run. I've managed to get some potato seeds and like you can only buy 23 potato seeds um, every so often because the shops don't restock too quickly. So I'm going to have to get master farmers done at some point but I kind of want a higher thieving first. So I'll be back after I've done the farm run and we'll see how much experience we've got. I've also got some super compost to collect and, and waste on potatoes. It's two farming. That's level three farming. That's level four farming. That's level five farming. That is level 6 farming. There's level 7 farming. And there's level 8 farming. And we're coming in with level 9 farming. So, a new day, another farm run. And this should be 10 farming. And this should be 11 farming. Didn't quite get it on the spuds. Only got 10 spuds for the patch. It's terrible. We don't nearly missed it. 13 farming. So we're coming in with 14 farming. 15 farming. So just after the last clip, I actually got my second strange rock of farming. So this should be 17 farming when I add these. Yeah, there we go. So to get started with the beehives. The easiest way for Iron Man is to come over to this guy in Falador Park, right click, buy woad leaves. They're only 25 GP each, so I'm going to buy a thousand to start with, just because my cash stack isn't massive. And then you teleport over to Ardoon, Ardogni, whatever you want to call it. You want to teleport over to Ardi, and then behind player owned farms, I'll show you on the minimap. There is seven beehives. So we've got another Thieves Guild caper completed from Tiny Acorns. We get a thousand thieving experience. Uh, and we can get some other stuff as well. And we've unlocked Koshing of Volunteers in the Thieves Guild. But I have to complete the feud quest first. I'll be back with the next caper. So no quest points, but we get 5,000 thieving experience plus the 4,800 that I got from handing in the flame fragments. We also get improved loot from pickpocketing. I don't quite know what that means, and neither does the wiki, but that's what we get. But we should be able to now go into here. 44 thieving. Nice. Definitely getting up there. And once I can do the safes as well, that's going to be some serious GP an hour. I'm not going to be struggling out on GP at all. So if I go to Dodgy Derrick and trade with Dodgy Derrick, I should be able to buy lockpicks. And I'm going to keep buying them out because they're going to come in handy for Desert Treasure once I've hit 53 thieving anyway. So that's that's going to be my source of lockpicks because I'm still one hunter I've really really neglected hunter but I can now open the more XP doors so I think these ones are 210 and these ones are 280 so it's, it works out to be nearly a thousand XP a run now rather than 600 before I can also open up these chests as long as I don't get the look that I had last time open the chest and they're 180 experience each and you get hanky points as well that I can hand in we're coming in with 30 farming coming in with 31 farming from doing the mucking out of the pens so coming in with 32 farming there we go we are now a practiced farmer coming in with level 2 archaeology and we're coming in with another archaeology level or two so that's level 5 well, I didn't realise it, but we've just hit 700, well, 701 total level now. So I've become an intern. 
Coming in with level 6 archaeology. Coming in with 7 archaeology. Coming in with 8 archaeology. And we're coming in with 9 archaeology. So we've got level 10 archaeology. Hey, there we go. 17. And we're coming in with level 20 archaeology. Coming in with 21 archaeology and 720 total levels. Coming in with 22 archaeology. So we'll just open this door because I got the custodian log pages. I got an achievement and level 25 archaeology. So we're just going to contribute to getting this reward. I've got three out of nine now and uh, nearly 700 chronos just for the three items. That's pretty good. Coming in with 26. So there we go, first quest completed, one quest point, some experience in the form of a lamp uh, and some, some junk items. I'll keep the mine spike staff though because I can change it to whatever I need. Coming in with another quest completed, we get a 4.8k XP lamp, which I'm going to use on range because my range is really lacking. So hopefully we get above 20, 24. That's good. I'm going to use the reward from... Uh, the Grand Tree on there as well, just to boost it up even higher, hopefully get to around 40. Coming in with quest number 3 for another quest point and some cooking experience. And there we go, started recipe for disaster, that's another quest point. Gotta help a cooking need. Hey, there we go. There we go, 90 quest points. Getting up there. Wouldn't be a real RuneScape video without showing the cooking or the burning of the red berry pie. Oh, and I got it first try. Iron Man look right there. So, after helping a useless squire and meeting an incredibly red berry pie loving big dwarf, we have completed the knight's sword and we should be able to use the lamp. Straight on smithing. 34 smithing. Means I get to skip steel. And we're coming in with the completion of the dig site quest. 15k mining, 2k herbal ore, and some trash. And we can pick up some other things once we've got some combat levels. So, one piercing note completed. That is a, a seriously dark quest. I decided to sit down and actually watch some of the cutscenes and things rather than just skipping through it all. And that is a seriously dark quest and we're coming in with the end of the tourist trap quest the first reward giving us 25 agility and the next one giving us 29 pretty much missed the level but i just got 42 magic from collecting the batwing that i'm going to use in the lost city quest to create the batwing wand and book i think this quest took less time than a uh, cook's assistant the new cook's assistant did but that is Lost City completed for three quest points. Access to Xanaris. And we have unlocked... Uh, I'm going to butter it, but we've unlocked Shelda, uh, the Slayer Master, or Chelda, or Shilda, whatever you want to call her, when we get 75 combat, which I'm not going to even touch Slayer until 75 combat. So while I was here, I decided to claim the next piece of armor, which is the plate legs of the trials. But we're going to roll the dice going to claim the 250k plus the fortunate component hopefully it's a fortunate component with the price of it that should be a fortunate component so there we are the cash stack is now back up there again I've somehow managed to spend 330k and I only have these stats so I've just found a little bit of a glitch I've just taken the plate legs of the trials off to go and start the next quest I have 100 quest points, but I only have 97 quest points down here. Fixie game, Jagex. And here we are with another quest completed. It's 101 quest points now, only 49 more until we get to claim the staff. And there we go with the end of the Grand Tree quest. Five quest points, big, big combat XP lamp. Some agility and some magic XP as well. So the agility, I'm not sure what level I'm going to get, maybe 34, yeah, spot on, 34, magic, not going to get a level, and this lamp is going to go straight into range, because the quicker I can get 40 range, the better, because range is, is really 
underwhelming early on. Coming in with a cheeky farming level on the way to the next quest. I'm going to sell these chickens and then we'll go and do the next one. So I don't know if this is rare, but if anyone in the comments can tell me. I've got a Bandosian Bantam hen, female. But the chickens that I've got in here are both just the regular chickens that I bought off of Granny, whatever her name is over there. So if anyone can let me know how rare that is, that would be awesome, thank you. Now here we are with yet another quest completed. It's two quest points and the experience will get us 40 attack and 45 thieving as well. And here we are with the end of the Shiloh Village quest. After this short little bit of speaking. So that's another two quest points taking us to 110 total. And that's going to get us 40 crafting as well. So now that we have access to Shiloh Village... I can do uh, AFK mining on gem rocks and it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to bank. And I can also do uh, trout and salmon fishing for fishing and cooking levels now in the Shiloh Village uh, River. So I think for this episode I'm going to end it there. We've made some good end roads into the 150 quest points only having 40 left. We're also ending with 795 total. And I think in the next episode, we're going to hit that 150 quest points, no doubt. I'm probably going to do a little bit more questing while I'm editing. So that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Drop us a, a like, a comment, a sub, whatever you want to do. And I'll see you in the next one.